Okay. Um, this is going to be the spy and QQQ video for today. Um, I wanted to go over a bunch of things with you guys, and I wanted to kind of give some insights into how I live trade on a daily basis. Um, I want this to be more of an educational concept, um, so you guys could get, um, you know, really see how I do my day trading um, on a daily basis, and you guys could also maybe get some inspiration for your own trades as well. It may just be really helpful, so it may be confusing at first, but I'd highly suggest uh, sticking this one through to the end because I think a lot of you guys can learn a lot and maybe um, you know really up your trading game. So I want to start by talking about you know the forecast that I gave last Thursday on the on the dashboard. So let's go here, um, ETF spy, and you know if we if we go back here all the way on June fifteenth. So over here, this was June fifteenth Thursday, and this is where Thursday closed. And you know Friday into here, the report that I gave, you could see this massive VOX divergence, um, meaning price rising and VOX coming down. That is always a quite the bearish sign. Um, and we wrote, notice how price moves higher today. I meant to write moved higher today, but VOX moved lower. This is called VOX divergence, and it tells us that it's finally time to be risk off. I'll no longer be looking to go long spy from here on out until something changes. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, finally, at 440, I'm now risk off. I'm not going to start a short position tomorrow, but we'll look into it over the weekend. The reason why I didn't want to start a short position is simply because it was a three day weekend and I didn't want to lose on theta. But we can see ever since I gave that report, uh, that pretty much marked the top of this rally. Um, I couldn't see the data on Thursday, but on Friday, um, you know, the market opened and it's been downhill from there. In fact, if I would have went short, at 4.42, you know, a market open on Friday, I would be eight dollars in or not seven dollars in profit right now. Uh, my puts. Um, the lesson that I'm trying to teach is that VOX will always give the macro trend, um, and you know you don't have to uh, look at many other things because when when the market tops, VOX will tell us. Um, when the market bottoms, VOX will tell us with uncanny accuracy. Um, then I want to go over a couple of other. Of the of the other updates I gave, and I want to explain how you know it it can be really hard to trade off the reports unless um, unless you have access to something like LDPM, and so you know over the over the past over, so we'll start with today's report. Spies folks now fully bearish, and the heat map and the heat map shows no purchasing support until price moves lower, a lot lower. This is a dangerous spot to be long, in my opinion. Uh, daily LDPM is still bullish and price is still above the hourly trigger. But if any of those changes, I'll be looking to buy puts with plenty of time on them and essentially be short when price is below the hourly trigger and flat above. Meaning once I take the short position below the hourly trigger, the hourly trigger cracks. Um, if price ends up moving back above, then I would cut my shorts. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I also wrote the only thing throwing me off here is that there was no bearish daily divergence, divergences, as you guys can see with each new climb that that price made on SPY, daily velocity climbed as well, um, which would usually mean that the hourly trigger would hold as firm support. However, due to the bearish data, instead of trying to buy dips at the hourly trigger, I'd rather go short below. Meaning, if the data wasn't bullish, this would be a great spot to buy because if daily velocity is, is, is you know, healthy, if there's no divergences, it's telling you you want to buy the dip at the hourly trigger, just like here, just like here, um, you know, pretty simple. When daily velocity is rising, that's when you're trying to buy. But because of the bearish data, I said, you know what, I'm gonna stay away from trying to buy. Now, let's look what happened. Um, price came down, but it was really sticky. You know, you didn't get just a complete collapse, came right back up, never got back above, rejected and came back down. Give it a sec, okay. Um, now, the reason why it didn't just come straight down after breaking below the hourly trigger and retested up here is simply because of what we just spoke about with the no bearish divergences. So the hourly trigger was, Kind of sticky to break through, um, but however, you know, um, going into today, it it wasn't able to get back above end of day Tuesday and today Wednesday open with a gap down, etc. History from there. Um, now, for me, my trade was very simple. Uh, once I got this gap down, I traded it short. Now, when I trade short, I like to buy puts with plenty of time in them. So for me personally. How I managed this trade was I took puts that expired on July 27th. Now, when I have puts that expire in a long time, 
I know the market isn't going straight down, right? As wonderful as that would be for my puts, it's very unlikely that the market is just going to be going straight down. And so what I like to do is when I see that when I when I get warnings that the market's going to be making a making a little reversal, making a short term pop in a longer term downtrend, I simply buy shorter term calls to hedge my longer term puts. Then when the upside is finished, I sell those calls. And for downside, I have my July 21st puts. So if you guys um, you guys look over here, you'll notice right about here, right before this major upside happened, look at the le bottom left screen. Um, you know, you guys see all these green dots. We had SPY, QQQ, GME, AMD, um, Amazon, Google, Apple, uh, Netflix. What is that? Microsoft. Let's move it over a drop. Um, basically a whole lot of green dots. And what this means is simply that LDPM, that 15 minute LDPM is, oh, on, is turning bullish on a lot of stocks. So 15 minute LDPM is this white line that you see, shows you good liquidity and bad liquidity. And if we go to the same spot here, here's where it is. So this is lined up perfectly. You guys can see my cursor. It's gonna be the same on all screens. You guys could see when LDPM moved below price, um, that's, you know, if you look at my bottom left screen, you'll see that green dot on SPY um, right there. That's when the crossover happened. And when LDPM turns bullish on the 15 minute, it usually provides a nice scalp opportunity to the upside. Now, it wasn't just SPY that flipped green. You guys can see on, on the bottom left screen how many green dots there was. All important stocks in the market, all stocks that move the market. And so as soon as I get those kind of signals, I simply go long. Now, if I go long with short, shorter term calls over here, if you guys look on the left side of my screen, all those red dots, that's LDPM bearish crossovers. Now that coincided with price banging against the hourly trigger and rejected, that was a great time to get out of my calls, which I did um, and, and held on to my, to my puts. Um, short, shortly after, you know, again, look on the left side of the screen, You'll see a lot of those red dots flash all at once. That was a sign to get out. Um, and, you know, coming into today, started the day with a gap down. And I don't know if Gavin sent this to you guys. He was definitely supposed to. And it'll be on Meme Stock Watch in the future. Every week you guys will have these levels. But Gavin's lower bound level for this move down, for the first move down, is 434. So basically, uh, the move up in SPY, all the way up, I'm talking about, like ever since 400 was one, two, three, four, five, five waves higher. Now, after, uh, for you guys that understand Elliott waves, after you complete five waves higher, you do A, B, C down. So we weren't sure if this was A, B, C down, and now we start to the next leg, or if this whole thing was A, now we're about to do a big B to the upside and then C down before we move on to the next leg. So that, that Gavin will update you guys tonight, but Gavin's lower end target for the A, itself or for the ABC was 434.34. And so I bought my puts up here at 438.11. Remember exactly when I got filled because I bought it literally the, the second market opened and I trimmed them here, cut them here because that's, that's where Gavin's lower bound level is. Um, so you guys know how this works. If the hourly close is above the level, price will push up to the next level. If the hourly close is below the level, price will come down to the lower level. So you guys can see here, um, you know, time was uh, at, at 7.05, whichever that was in market time, definitely not. Am I in New York time? No, definitely not. Okay, so for New York time, uh, 10.05, you guys can see the hourly candle closed above this level. Again, the hourly candle closed above this level, and that tells you price is going to push up to the next level, which it did. Um, so for me, when I'm trading, you know, I, I like to 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 close my positions at Gavin's levels. Um, it's really such a simple method. You know, if the hourly closes above, price will push up to the next level. If the hourly closes below, price will go down to the next level. Super simple method. Now, I wanna point out to you guys just today's trading because I was able to hit this move higher and I was able to hit this move lower just by using the LDPM scanner. So let me show you guys how this works. And remember, my cursor is gonna be on the same Time frame on all screens. So look what happened right here. You guys see all these green dots that came out out of nowhere, right? So all of a sudden you get QQQ bullish crossover, you get AMD bullish crossover, Tesla bullish crossover, Amazon bullish crossover, Microsoft bullish crossover, 
Uh, this is Baba, IWM. You know, all those are important. Right after that, we had SPY. Uh, GME, I guess not so important for the market, but SPXS, which is inverse the market, um, that turned bearish. And we also had Meta, uh, Roku, again, coin, those don't matter as much. But look what happened right after all these crossovers. Look at the look at the tops, top left screen or top right screen. You guys can see very shortly after there was a nice rally. Almost got to the hourly trigger, but there was negative hourly velocity. So price rejected the hourly trigger and came back down. Um, all very simple, a very easy rally to catch. And, and this all this green dot means is the LDPM crossover. If you guys now go to the bottom right screen, you'll see where the LDPM crossover happened for SPY itself. But right before that, we got it for QQQ and all those other stocks. And once these crossovers happen, once LDPM moves below price, it's simply telling you liquidity is now good. And when liquidity is good, price tends to rise. Then, you know, after cutting, you want to get out. I, I didn't cut the top. I actually cut right here. Um, so I missed out on further upside. But this was Gavin's level. Um, and I usually uh, trade all my positions around his levels. Um, price rejected the hourly trigger. And now very shortly after, look what happened here. All right, first SPY gave the first signal, bearish LDPM crossover. That was right here, this red candle right through the 15-minute LDPM. And right after that, you had QQQ, GME, AMD, Tesla, Google, uh, some of these other names. But, you know, the, a lot of the market names instantly, you know, got bearish LDPM crossovers. Right after that, you had Netflix, NVIDIA, and Meta. So right when all of these red dots come up, you can see where price is. Price is right here, and that's an easy short. As soon as you get all, all of them, all these crossovers, it's telling you just liquidity is now bearish, and price just plummeted straight down. Here's where the crossover happened. If you look at the top right screen, you could see this price went straight down right after this bearish crossover. So when I tell you guys I'm buying long-term puts, when there's pops in the market, there's nothing I could do about that. I'm trying to give you guys a forecast for the next day, simply based on the options positioning, based on the heat maps, based on VOX. But during the day, there's, you know, the market moves up and down. Nothing's ever going to be straight down. Nothing's ever going to be straight up, except for this rally that we had from 400 to 440. That was straight up. My point is, is that it's going to be really hard to, to take actual trades off of my forecast because during the day, something can happen, you know, something unforeseen can happen. Uh, that I wouldn't see in the data the night before. But when I use LDPM or whichever system that you have to trade, um, you know, you could always hedge the other direction with shorter term calls or even the same, same July 21st. But that's how I played this move down. And I was able to make a nice amount of, a nice amount of money. Bought my puts here at, at 438.04, rode them down. Um, actually stopped out here. Originally sold them once, then bought them back at the hourly trigger after the rejection. Um, but closed them here, caught this upside move, caught this downside move, and caught this upside move, all using just the LDPM scanner. So, you know, pretty good stuff. Um, just want to, again, this is simply just like an insight into how I trade on a daily basis. These are all the tools that I use, nothing crazy. Um, I'm just using liquidity and triggers, which are acceleration levels. Um, velocity is also pretty useful. So for those of you who are familiar with bullish divergences, uh, something really cool today. Um, so I talk about this a lot, uh, but you guys could learn something new right now. Um, bullish divergences is when price makes new lows, but velocity is not making new lows. And so the most extreme velocity print here, you know what, this was actually much better example in QQQ today. So let's change this to QQQ. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you look at QQQ's five minute velocity, here was the most extreme print to the downside. And this print happened when price was at 362.72. Now watch what happens. You get one lower, one new low in price. Velocity does not make a new low. Then you get another new low in price. Velocity does not make a new low. And then you get another new low in price while velocity does not make, make a new low. That's called three bullish divergences. And after you get three bullish divergences, price will return to the trigger on the time frame that the divergence is on. So this is five minute divergence, price returned right to the five minute trigger. But a lot of times um, five minute divergences in turn can help turn the hourly velocity. So you guys could see, you know, hourly velocity was stepping down to the downside. 
green is the hourly velocity. So you guys could see it was getting pretty nasty. But because you had the bullish five minute divergences, which was able to turn price, you're able to turn hourly velocity. You, get, you guys could see it getting better one, two, three hours in a row. Because the five minute velocity was able to turn the hourly velocity from really negative to you know slightly improved, SPY was able to make this nice push higher. And you know, also very shortly after the divergences, you got SPY on the same time as the divergences, right before the third divergence, you got, had this green dot in SPY, which correlates to right here, this move above LDPM. Um, and so a lot of times you guys will see these things line up together and it's really cool and you have confluence um, in everything. So going into tomorrow, um, the SPY report shows that VOEX has now moved into the inhibition zone into the propagation zone, I'm sorry. So this is a bad omen, guys. Um, here, we can look. This time where VOX dipped into the propagation zone was shortly followed by this nice little dip here. Another time VOX dipped into the propagation zone, again, followed by a, a dip here. Another time, dip, another time, dip, another uh, here, dipped into the propagation zone. We had this dip. When VOX stays in the propagation zone, that's not a dip, that's gonna be, you know, a push down. Uh, that's where price really slides. Like here, Vox stayed into the propagation zone for a while. Price took this long tumble here as well. Vox moved into the propagation zone right here, um, and price took a big tumble. So here's how it's going to work. If Vox does similar to here, 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 and here, and just comes into the uh, propagation zone for a teeny bit, pops right back higher, then we know, okay, further upside. Let's move higher. Market's going to move higher. If Vox starts to crack, you know, and, and does not snap back right away, that's a bad omen, and that's going to be something like this or something like this, and the market might be in for a really big slide. So there's no need to guess. There's no need to make predictions. It's just follow the data. Let's see what the data gives us. Let's see what the data tells us, and you know we'll, we'll have a great idea of what's to come. Now, let's go down to the snap graphs. I want to point out that the one-day, five-day, and the 10-day are all bearish. So I completely remain bearish in the market. Um, you know, there's nothing that's going to force me to view my, to change my view. Although I will say unless 434, 34 doesn't cracks, then we're likely not hitting lower. If 434, 34 cracks, then Gavin's going to have exactly the levels that you need to trade this down. If it does crack, uh, we could be looking at 432.42, 431.05, 429.33, something like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, although I'm expecting downside, when I trade it level by level, I'm only going to buy puts for further downside if there's an hourly close below 434.34. And then, of course, I'll trade short-term pops using LDPM. Or, for example, when the one-minute trigger crosses above the five-minute trigger, that's a bullish sign, and price made a nice move higher. Um, so, very simple. Um, let's just go down a little more. I will say that the heat map shows purchasing support if IV climbs. So, it's always good to keep track of IV. You might want to watch that tomorrow. If IV moves higher, we can actually expect price maybe even to rise if the purchasing support holds through. Um, and then let's go down to the options positioning. I did notice a 59% increase in sold in the money puts. Again, very interesting. Up until now where I was tracking this, they were usually here in the out the money section. I don't know if this is like a new way of them selling it, or if, if it's unrelated to, to the puts that we know drive price action higher. But I will say there was more covered call sold or naked call sold. So that's a bearish, that's a synthetic short position, selling calls. Um, and there was a decrease in bought calls. So, you know, people closed out a lot of their calls today, uh, institutions, funds, et cetera. Um, and there was also a 49% increase in bought puts. So again, you know, we got to watch out for downside here. Boex is pointing to further downside. But I don't think um, the only way I would take a new trade to the downside is if 434.34 is lost. And check out Gavin's video later. He will you know, give you guys everything you need to know for the wave count and uh, where to expect price to move down if this level is lost. So also, you know, I'm really sorry this was a lengthy video, but I want, you guys are paying uh, for the service. Take advantage of it. You know, learn as much as you can. Um, it's cool to get forecasts every night, and I get that. But... Our, our real goal is to teach you guys, teach you guys that there is a working system that retail can take advantage of to make money in the market, to forecast the market, to track the market. And, you know, if you're here anyway, why not learn it? So hope this was informational or educational to some of you guys. And I hope some of you guys are able to gain from this video. 
um if it did help you you know reach out let me know let me know what you guys thought was good let me guys know what you thought was bad uh i love i love hearing all your guys feedback and thoughts